Hi everyone, in today's video, I want to talk about how you can use Google Earth for sketching. Now, Google Earth, if you do not know, it's actually a 3D mapping software that's made by Google. It's free and it's available on Android, iOS, and even on the computer, Windows and Mac OS. So I have uh, just opened up Google Earth and this is how it looks. So you can use your fingers to move around, uh, two fingers side by side like this to uh, move like this. And you can also rotate, zoom in and zoom out. So this allows you to move to different places and also to choose your own composition. This by the way is uh, Manhattan in New York City. So let's go to uh, Singapore where I live. So you will do this uh, animation and then jump over to Singapore. Now this is a great way to do some virtual um, traveling. And I use Google Earth a lot when I am planning to uh, travel overseas, basically to check out the places that I'm going to visit in advance. Now, um, if you do not see 3D buildings, it means that you, have, you actually have to uh, turn on the 3D view. And not all cities will uh, show you 3D buildings. Some cities um, um, are more, how should I say, sensitive. So for example, North Korea, uh, when you look at North Korea, they will not show you 3D buildings. And if you look at some Middle Eastern countries, they don't have the 3D buildings as well. And thankfully for Singapore, there are 3D buildings. Now this map or these buildings here, they are not, I mean, they are quite recent, but they are maybe two or three years later compared to uh, what, compared to the buildings that we have. So some of the areas are actually under construction. But if I go down to the street today, those buildings would have already been completed. So this is not like the most recent uh, models or maps that you will see. Now, one good thing about this app um, that I really like is, uh, as mentioned earlier, you can travel virtually around. Not just that, it can also help you discover places that you have never been to or spot new places to draw. So for example, uh, at this road junction here, this is a road junction that I sketch quite frequently. Sometimes I would sit here to sketch this building over here, or sometimes I may sit here to sketch uh, this building over here. And now I have uh, accidentally uh, clicked on this area and I realized that there is actually this open rooftop area here uh, that I can go up to to draw because this looks like a public housing estate. So uh, for public housing estates, they have open access uh, corridors for public, basically for anyone to go up. So I can actually take the lift up to this level here and sketch the rooftops from this, uh, this open rooftop here. So uh, that is definitely one place I will go to sketch uh, in the future. Um, here there is an open rooftop as well, but this is a private building, so I am not able to go up. So another advantage of Google Earth is, of course, uh, when it comes to uh, sketching, uh, you will be able to access certain uh, scenes like this, a top view, an aerial view, uh, which would not be possible if you were to sketch on location. Uh, technically speaking, uh, sketching with Google Earth, this is not urban sketching because uh, Urban sketching requires you to sketch on location, sketch what you uh, see, sketch basically sketch the subject in uh, real life. So now we are sketching with the help of this uh, software. I love uh, panning around, just moving around to uh, look at places, uh, look at sometimes look at shops that are that may no longer be there. And I like to check out the architecture as well. Some of the 3D models can be quite detailed. For more popular cities, um, they are really quite detailed. So let's take a look at Rome. 
I'll do some drawing later on. So Rome is the capital of Italy. They have um, little captions here, which is quite nice. I have never been to Italy before, but I would love to travel there. So let's find a Colosseum and the ruins. Oh, okay, it's here. So this model is actually quite um, detailed, quite accurate. And you can even see the cast shadows, which is nice. And you can move around. Even the trees are way more detailed compared to the models uh, in Singapore. Here you can actually see the texture for the leaves. But for Singapore, it's just like very polygon uh, <laughs> trees. And you can see this like cars parked in front of this warehouse building. Uh, the thing about Google Earth is you will not, I mean you can go high up like this, like top down, but you will not be able to go down onto the street. So this is probably the lowest um, I can go. Yep, so you will not be able to go down and stand on the street itself. Another thing is uh, you can see some uh, distortion. That's because the photos that were used to create the buildings, the 3D models, they are not that high res. So uh, when you are sketching, um, for certain areas where it's not high res, it would be almost impossible to see the details. So sometimes you have to uh, make your own uh, judgment. Use your artistic impression. Uh, sorry, use your artistic license to add or not draw the details. This is nice. And when I draw, I try to draw the site. Uh, I mean, the site that is uh, lit by sun. So here is the shadow site, and this is the site that is lit by sun. And this is not a particularly good view because the buildings. Are uh, behind they are blocked by trees but sometimes you want um, the trees in front but sometimes you don't it depends on what you are trying to draw of course wow check out the roofs here these are quite detailed but if you zoom in close you can see it's uh, quite blur if you zoom out a bit you can see it's uh, quite detailed so google earth is good for sketching like um, a sort of a zoom out scene unless you can find a model that is really detailed see the distortion here for the roofs okay uh, before you draw something try to take a screenshot so for example let's say let's say i want to draw um, let's say i want to draw something like this I will try to zoom out a bit so that I can see more of the scene. If you were to draw something like this and you realize that hey, you want to draw, uh, you want to draw a bit more, you want to draw maybe this building on the left side, but you have picked this view, and when you move this to the left side, the perspective will change. So um, try to zoom out like this and draw so that all the buildings are in this uh, same perspective space rather than zoom in like this and then move the perspective for this and this that you have just drawn uh, it's going to be different so i highly recommend you do a screenshot first and also when you're drawing you may accidentally move the scene around and it's going to be very difficult to move back to the same angle all right, I'm back in Singapore. So this is the view that I'm going to draw. So I'm just going to take a screenshot first. I'm just going to sketch this really quickly. Now you can choose whatever composition to you want. And this is actually a really great way to practice perspective. And when you are drawing, try to look at what you draw pay like really uh, close attention to what you draw and try to draw what you dr see uh, rather than what you 
think you see. So try and uh, use this exercise to practice um, your hone your observation skills, hone your ability to draw details or to simplify uh, details. Make sure you get the angles right. Make sure you get the perspective right. You don't actually have to know perspective in order to draw something uh, that is uh, in perspective. Okay, here I'm going to draw this uh, big building here with uh, horizontal uh, white stripes across the front of the building. Now this is where I can draw the lines with black ink or I can actually use my brush pen which I'm going to do so right now to color this building, to paint this building. So this is negative shape drawing because I'm going to paint this black and then I'm going to use the white gel pen to add the, basically the horizontal lines. I'm going to add a bit more detail to the top of the building first. So using the brush pen, it's a very quick way to um, block out black areas. So now I can use the white gel pen. This pen is not that good. This is a new white gel pen that I bought recently. Okay, so this one is uh, working so much better. So maybe I should ditch the earlier one, the Sakura Jelly Roll. What is this? This is the Pentel K180 Hybrid Roller. So using this white gel pen, I am able to add the horizontal lines very quickly. And uh, seems to be three, sorry, four vertical pillars here. So I can add those. Now the idea here is to basically get the shapes uh, right, get the general perspective uh, to look accurate enough. Let's draw the other building on the side. So this is a sketchbook, so just have fun uh, drawing. Uh, practice. Don't be uh, too precious about your sketchbook. Use it as a, a place where you can learn to improve your drawing. So for this building here, I'm going to paint it with a light uh, gray wash. Okay, so I can do this very quickly. Again, I'm able with the with the brush pen I'm able to draw and paint this really quickly. And I may want to add some trees on the side of the road here as well. And for this particular building, I want to add some lines at the top and maybe add some details. You can also use colored inks to draw. So here I have basically drawn two buildings, one which is black with reverse white and this is a gray. You can also draw a building that is um, white in color. So. Next building that I want to draw is this one. So for this, I can, I'm just going to draw the windows with uh, lines like this, just to create the variation. So now I have a white building, a gray building and a black building. And when you draw buildings that are further away in the background, for example, um, like those that are really far away, you can, uh, if you're using a fountain pen, you can actually turn your fountain pen to the other side and draw with the really uh, thin lines. This will help you separate the buildings that are in front, that are closer to you, versus the buildings that are much further away. But the inflow 
when you do this um, it's not I mean when you draw with the opposite side of the fountain pen nib the ink flow is not going to be that good so you have to draw a bit slower or maybe you can draw like this with the fountain pen um, more vertical so this is one way to uh, one way that you can use to create depth now uh, one tip to drawing buildings um, like this from the aerial view is um, when you are drawing let's say another building you have already drawn one building here for example you want to draw the other building um, pay attention to where the other building will start so the bottom of the other building in this case will start here relative to the height of this building so it's going to start here and I have another building here there's a tall skyscraper here the bottom is going to start here and there's a diagonal line here and the top will end around here it will end around here almost aligned to this building here on the side so when I'm drawing I'm actually using all the uh, buildings that I have already drawn just uh, for comparison purposes so now I can just draw this down all the way and complete this building and for this particular um, cityscape uh, there are a lot of overlapping buildings so that's actually quite good for uh, creating the sense of depth the foreground background thing so I'm just going to continue to draw remember try to draw uh, what you see not what you think you see and if you really do that you may get into the artist zone you may start to feel like um, you lose track of time which is great because uh, then you really are in the artist zone and this is a I mean drawing is a fantastic hobby for passing time and it's really fun as well okay so I have a few buildings here already so I'm going to again paint with um, this gray so I'm going to separate this building in the background here um, from this building just by painting it gray and I can use the black to separate this building from these two buildings which are light lighter in uh, value and if I want to I can use um, this brush pen same thing this brush pen to add some trees here for windows that are really far away that are really small sometimes I would just use a horizontal lines like this to draw the wide uh, long windows or if the windows are really that small then maybe I may just use uh, little dots like this to represent the uh, tiny windows so I'm not going to draw everything I'm just going to leave parts of the page white now sometimes I use Google Earth to quickly test out certain ideas um, to test out certain composition and once you're done with the sketch uh, for your next sketch you can try to uh, go for a different composition go for a different perspective so you can go high you can go low you can go up close or you can go um, as much as possible as close as possible to the ground level interesting there are no cars on the street I did not realize that until now so just move around and test out different uh, composition different perspective uh, challenge yourself um, to drawing uh, something as detailed as cityscapes or if you want to draw something really um, simple if you want to start out simple you can go in and draw buildings that don't have uh, that much detail so here you can see the model it was chopped off here so not all areas will have uh, 3d buildings and if you want to learn more about the places you can actually uh, click on the click on the 
names and learn more about the places. For this sketch, I only used black and white. So I recommend starting out with just uh, black and white. Practice your line drawing and then practice applying values, uh, applying shadows. Um, and then when you're more comfortable with that, you can move on to uh, mixing colors and painting. So yeah, thanks for watching this video. I hope this is helpful. Go sketch. Bye.